Welcome to Cook Studio Review. I'm Enzo. You'll be watching this review from the perspective of a mixing engineer. Over the past two years, a pair of earphones that only cost 9.9 .9 RMB, which is about one US dollar, on Chinese online shopping platforms, have sold hundreds of thousands of copies. I bought eight pairs myself to take a comprehensive look at their performance. The packaging of the ordinary video is just a very simple plastic bag, which is understandable for one dollar headset. But the so-called second generation of Vito YD30 has a standard packaging and an anime character being designed. Since the mature is pretty good at marketing, when I bought it, I happened to catch a discount and it was also about $1. They're very ordinary flat-headed earphone, which is kinda out of place in today's mainstream in-ear monitors. And their direct application of the public mode, they have countless pretty sensors with similar modes. And the most well-known should be the classic Sennheiser MX500. However, Fido have a variety of colors, as if afraid to miss any users with other color performance. The wild weight is 16.3 grams. I bought different versions of wilds, including the one with microphone. Let's briefly listen to the quality of the built-in microphone. Bluebird microphone tests. This is Google Studio. Check check 123. Check check 123. SM7B quality tests. Check check 123. Check check 123. Lightning AirPods. Microphone quality tests. Check check one two three. Check check one two three. Microphone quality tests on Fido. Check check one two three. Check check one two three. It can be heard that the Fido has a large background noise with this built-in microphone, but low frequency still exists and has a certain gain, so the voice sounds thicker. Frequency response. After compensing with the harmon curve, it can be seen that there is a very large attenuation in the mid and high frequencies, or in the same understanding, a large gain in the mid-low frequency. There is a large low frequency roll-off below 100Hz, which is a headset with a very muffled and unplumbered sound. From the frequency response perspective, I cannot associate with high sound quality. In addition, although several Fido earphones are in some way similar, the frequency response will vary slightly, which means that the Fido you bought will not sound exactly the same as someone else Fido. The tightness of flat head plug when warm will also produce different low and mid frequency response due to the leakage. The general variables are shown in the figure. If you prefer a more flat performance, you can obtain a frequency response calibration file made by me from Patient. It involves manual auditory judgment especially in the high frequency range. And if you support Cook Studio on Patreon by joining membership, it will help us continue producing audio review content faster and better. Thank you for your support. Distortion. The area of distortion in different colors of Vitos and YD30 are similar, but it is common to encounter discrepancies in the amount of distortion between the left and right ears. Taking YD30 as an example, the left and right ears have a difference of 6 to 10 dB in distortion at the same frequency range of low and mid frequencies, which is caused by inconstant quality control. Assuming you are lucky enough, if a certain pair with both sides maintaining its left ear level distortion is purchased, a relatively clean mid-high frequency playback can be obtained at a normal music listening level of 86 dB. In the process of continuing to increase the volume, the area with low frequency as the main part will show an increasingly large degree of distortion. And different colors of the fiddles also show a difference of about 10 dB in left and right distortion. Let's enter the Cuckoo Studio mixing space. Due to the variable frequency response and other factors, we'll average them here and present 3D graph to show some typical listening problem. The large-scale shelving attenuation of the mid-high frequencies caused the upper listening space to shrink. Correspondingly, the bass frequency of most instruments and the muddy frequency range after being raised are emphasized, sounds very boxy. The large-scale roll-off at around 100Hz makes the sound lack of a bass. Compared with normal flat monitor speakers, it can be said that they are completely two different sounds. In terms of the level difference between the left and right channels, if you are lucky, you can get relatively excellent left and right symmetric frequency response and a relatively solid center imaging. On the other hand, in the other half of the cases, the mid-low frequency and some mid-high frequency of the headphones as a whole will have a more obvious skewed sound. And in the wearing variables of the flat head plugs, this level difference may actually be more pronounced. There's a higher likelihood of encountering significant distortion in the mid and low frequencies. But due to the roll off in the low frequencies, these characters are not as noticeable. If adjusted through significant EQ, there may be a feeling of scattering in the low frequencies due to issues with distortion and skew. 
If listening to music at normal sound pressure levels, you are unlikely to be affected by the level of distortion in the mid-high frequencies. However, due to deviations in frequency response, the sound imaging may still be affected in terms of its solidity. However, aside from the disadvantage of the frequency response, when given a large-scale EQ to the Fiddles family, the normal volume depth performance is at a good level. It is difficult to find a second place in these extremely low-priced earphones. When we discuss the fiddle, we're actually discussing the design by Foster, exemplified by the MX500. This classic design, born at the end of the last century, once swept the world and was almost a must-have for those born in the 80s and 90s. It was the first device I used to listen to music. The disadvantages of this type of design, such as leakage and frequency response disadvantages, seems too much to cover all these advantages. But it is like a rusty hammerhead. As long as it's given strong rust remover, it can be still completes its work. It is suitable for people who don't want to spend too much money on earphones. This is a retro experience, but the cost is low enough this time. This is Google Studio. Please stay tuned. I'll be continuing to explore the secrets of headphones with you.